Ok. Olá, muito boa tarde. Sejam todos muito bem-vindos. Olá, boa tarde. Vocês estão todos bem-vindos ao último panel do terceiro South Brazilian Forum on Biogas e Biometane. I'd like to remind you that you can confirm your participation and share it in the social media, Facebook, Instagram, by using the hashtag biogas and biomethane. You still have enough time to participate in the biogas challenge. All you have to do is to check on the initial page of our homepage. The password will be informed here and um, it is so worthwhile to check who the winners are. You can win points by obtaining the access code at the different stands and also by carrying out the tasks in our challenge. And then if you haven't visited the other stands, don't waste any more time. Go there and check it out after this panel. Next week, you will receive the certificates that were informed at the moment of your registration. We would now like to invite you all to watch the video of our sponsor, BRDR. Em 60 anos de atuação, o BRDE está presente na vida das empresas do Sul. Uma história de desafios superados, de resultados positivos e principalmente de parceria no desenvolvimento e sucesso de nossos clientes. E nesses anos todos, nos orgulhamos de nossa marca ter se transformado em um dos pilares de fomento de toda a região Sul. BRDE, 60 anos. Crédito para inovar e desenvolver. Em 60 anos de atuação, o BRDE está presente na vida das empresas do Sul. Uma história de desafios superados, de resultados positivos e principalmente de parceria no desenvolvimento e sucesso de nossos clientes. E nesses anos todos, nos orgulhamos de nossa marca ter se transformado em um dos pilares de fomento de toda a região Sul. BRDE, 60 anos. Crédito para inovar e desenvolver in the south of Brazil. We have a large team waiting for us. Everybody is already connected and we will soon start our session. This is the last panel of the third forum on biogas and biomethane. And this session is on the incentives for innovation in biogas in the southern region of Brazil. Em 60 anos de atuação, o BRDE está presente na vida das empresas do Sul. Uma história de desafios superados, de resultados positivos e principalmente de parceria no desenvolvimento e sucesso de nossos clientes. E nesses anos todos, nos orgulhamos de nossa marca ter se transformado em um dos pilares de fomento de toda a região Sul. BRDE, 60 anos. Crédito para inovar e desenvolver. Vamos, vamos então dar início ao nosso último painel. So we're now going to start our last panel. It is on incentives for innovation in biogas in the south of Brazil. Professor Suelen Paesi is going to be the moderator. She's already here with us. And therefore, I turn over to her for her introduction of our panelists. And I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and welcome you all. Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon, Flavio. It is a real pleasure to be here on this last panel talking a little bit about science and related topics, and especially because we have already reached a lot of our goals with this forum. 
the goals were to integrate professionals, companies, research institutions, education institutions, and therefore this connection of the biogas chain. It is necessary, adamant for us really to have a transformation of biogas. Also in this event, we can clearly see in the cases and everything else, all of the business areas, what the advantages are for us here in this third event on the Brazilian South. This is already very clear. What we need to do is to contaminate, disseminate our belief that this is a good solution a solution to many problems. We were able to raise a few problems where the use of biogas is developed. We can make our producers even more efficient. also reducing the effects of greenhouse gas emissions. We can generate clean energy. We also saw all of the different forms of energy that may be produced from biogas. Uh, calorific or heat energy, thermal energy, electrical power. There are different forms of energy. Economic sustainability is also very important. Circular economy so that we can approximate the environmental issues to economic issues and also the production of byproducts with other economic interests, such as volatile fatty assets, which have a very significant economic value, hydrogen production, a very good form of energy, the alcohols, in addition to biofertilizers, there are business opportunities, new investments, market segments that we will be able to invest with safety. This morning, we had special contacts with the social impact generated by biogas and life quality. I wanted to make this introduction and provoke you a little bit. This transformation provided by biogas requires technical support, technological innovation. We need to provide solutions to all of the bottlenecks. There are national and international models that we can use. Frequently, we need local support specific support for our country. We have different types of waste when compared to other models, our temperatures are different, our problems are different, and therefore technical assistance and technological innovation are very important. In parallel, in the south of Brazil, we have universities, institute, and researchers that have a lot of capacity to generate knowledge. This is clearly seen by the national and international papers published by all of these universities and institutions. So in addition to all of this, in addition to generating knowledge, this group also develops human resources. Training is directly related to the biogas network training human resources at an ed undergraduate, graduate level, master's degrees, PhDs, professionals in the academia. So there are different situations 
that I'd like to work with in the scenario of biogas. How can we foster the integration of the research and innovation sector in the biogas network? To discuss this topic, among others, which I haven't mentioned, I'd like to invite Professor Odir de Lagostin. He is the president of FAPEDS. I'm going to briefly introduce him and I invite him, I'm sorry, I invite you to see his bio in the website. Professor Odir has worked with OFBEL since 87. He's a level 1A researcher for CNPQ since 97. He's also a member, a permanent member, member of the Brazilian College of Science. He is also part of the Technical Committee on Veterinary Medicine. He is director of FAPEDS and president of CONFAPI, the National Board of State Foundations to Support Research. With this mini bio that I've just read to you, I have a feeling that we have the right person to be here with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to congratulate all of the participants here today. It is a pleasure to be here, especially to talk about such an important topic, a innovation, right? such as innovation, because we will be discussing the tools that we have available to encourage innovation that might be understood as the transformation of knowledge into wealth. Em ambientes acadêmicos. A FAPERGS, Fundação de Amparo à Pesquisa do Rio Grande do Sul, vem atuando fortemente nessa, nesse, nesse front, né, no apoio à inovação. E isso, esse é um movimento relativamente recente. Até há alguns anos, a Fundação de Amparo à Pesquisa se dedicava a apoiar pesquisa nas universidades, se dedicava a apoiar a produção de conhecimento e a formação de recursos humanos. Isso continua, isso não deixou de acontecer. Mas hoje... Nós... Qualification. This still goes on, but today we're looking much more at innovation because we have realized that it is not enough to produce knowledge. We also need to provide the necessary conditions so that this knowledge is turned into wealth. I would like to stress some programs that FAPERGS, FAPERGS has been using. Que estimulam a criação de startups, de empresas iniciantes. Um, supports um, the knowledge created in academia and other programs are aimed at supporting innovation processes in corporations and us in other industries in the biogas and biomethane chain. We also have companies acting that need this support and stimulus in order to make their innovation projects progress. So I'd like to speak about these problems one by one, and then we will have the talks by Dr. Amari from FAPESC, uh, Amari from the Araucaria Foundation, where some of these programs are also conducted and other are exclusive to Rio Grande do Sul. There is one program which is common to all of these states, the southern states, which is called Centelia, namely Spark. Not just 
an innovative idea from the academia, but from anyone, anyone with a creative, innovative idea may forward this idea. It's going to be assessed. And if it is a good idea, it may receive a non refundable financial resources in order to put this idea in practice or to take this product to market. The Centeta program had its first uh, edition in 2019. And this year, we're going to have the second edition of the Centeta program. It is a federal government sponsored program coordinated by Synap together with the research fostering agencies of the Brazilian states. So the call for tender will be published in July or June this year. And so do submit proposals and ideas because we'll be more than pleased to support these ideas in the biogas biomethane chain. Another program that there will be a tender for out this year is the entrepreneur program called Doutor Empreendedor. Uh, this is for people who have a PhD and that have developed a program, a product or process during their qualification process. And now they have this good idea for a new product or a new process to market. And we manage to give them funds or a grant or a scholarship. We also have the Technova program also conducted together with FINEP and the research sponsoring agencies that provide grants up to 300,000 reais to fund innovation um, processes in corporations. And this is specific for companies. And here in Rio Grande do Sul, we have the Tech Futuro state government program by the Secretariat of Innovation, Science and Technology conducted with FAPERGS together with SEBRAI. SEBRAI also allocates funds to this program and it aims at supporting innovative research projects together with university researchers necessarily so in this case. So we have different tools to provide support to innovation. And there are also grants which are fond per due amounts that vary from 70,000 reais to 300,000 reais. Uh, the Centella and Renova programs respectively, and they're here available to any corporation that has an innovation project. So in these few minutes, I have commented upon some tools for supporting innovation by FAPERGS, and that can also provide support to the ecosystem of companies that work in this biogas, biomethane industry. Thank you very much. Professor Odir, thank you very much for your presentation. And I hope that you can stay with us for our Q&A later on. And I'd like to invite Professor Amari to start his presentation. Professor Amare is a director of science and technology and innovation at Fabergs. And he, by training, is an Odesk professor and uh, researcher since 1985. He is the postgraduate coordinator of the distant education program a scholar from CNPQ, a consultant of CNPQ and CAPIS and INAP, the full professor of the vegetable production course and masters in inclusive education. So Professor Amalri also has 
his time for making his presentation. And if you'd like to know more about the professor, you can find out about him on our platform or at the um, CNPQ CV website. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is always a pleasure to be able to contribute to the innovation ecosystem of Brazil. I would like to present to you, to show you a few slides. What Professor Odir said was very precise, describing all of the science and technology and innovation programs in the country. Technova 1, Technova 2, and Centena programs are the main boosters of proposals that we can receive in the field of biogas and biomethane in terms of research. So for PESC in providing support to the Santa Catarina State Program, through these programs mentioned by Prof Professor Udir, uh, performs this role. It also has some peculiarities. So FAPESC uh, allows for the progress of all areas, especially the regional balance of Santa Catarina, because we are a very diverse state in terms of the economic potential. So we have to promote a balance in between our regions inside our state and to foster the well-being of our people. <coughs> Excuse me. How have we done this through FAPESC? Can you change to the presentation mode so that we can see your slides better? Yes, it's much better. Thank you. I apologize for my mistake. So how have we done this in FAPESC? We have our directorates and our uh, management units. And also, we are an agency for providing development of public policies in the state of Santa Catarina. So we work with research, qualification of people, and scholarships, um, events, and information dissemination, awards and prizes, international cooperation, and innovation. Innovation has very recently added to the Santa Catarina state constitution. Of course, it does not replace research, the supplementary. Basic research is going to feed into the system that is going to produce technological innovation. FAPESC allocates its resources, 42% to innovation, 32% to research, 23% to human resources, 1% for international cooperation, and 2% to events, especially congresses, conferences. And in 2019, the, uh, so, uh, the Forum Brasileiro, the former edition of this forum, um, counted on the support of this agency. So the main structure is transfer of knowledge, the interaction of competences, incorporation of technologies, development of products and services, qualification of human resources, and consolidation of the ecosystem. How have we done this? How do we show our social role to the people at large? Currently, and I have made a uh, uh, comparison of the number of public calls, that is uh, fostering actions and scholarships, uh, this information dissemination events, research, international programs, technology and innovation, communication, and IT. In this overall slide from 2015 to 2020, there has been a major increase of public calls for tender, and therefore the state provided resources have taken a leap forward. So you can see the amounts in millions, in millions and the overall 
Observatory. What we invested in 2019 and 2020, I stress that these amounts are just the state counterparts and it does not involve all of the uh, resources that we bring in from national and international programs. And we want to reach 60, uh, 60 million this year. What is the law like about biogas currently? In Santa Catarina, we have law 17542, which was enacted in 2018, which provides the biogas legal framework. What are the obligations and competences of the state in this ecosystem? A few examples of uh, actions we have funded, like the air quality program with up to 1 million reais, the Technova 2 program, and recently a startup called Chemia from the city of Chapeco, together with Enbrapa, has developed a product for biogas recovery the source of which is human and industrial activities. Embrapa already produces gas from uh, um, swine manure, and this is used in the fleet of Embrapa cars. And now there has been another program, Technova 2, has done the same thing for industrial and human activities. Are there actions? in which we invest for disseminating information on biogas and biomethane, namely events. And we funded the second forum, second edition of this forum in 2019. And the International Symposium Knowledge City World Summit 2019. One of the areas in this summit was also the development of alternative sources for biofuels. And of course, the international calls, which are through the Newton Fund, Horizon 2020, SNSF Switzerland, CONFAP Italy, the international programs involving the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. These international agencies have open calls for biodiversity and alternative sources of energies, and uh, PAPES has been added as a co-funder of this work presented by these researchers. And more recently, the uh, calls for tenders developed by FAPES, some examples are these, the amounts go from 100 to 500,000 reais recovery of uh, agricultural, industrial, chemical, and foodstuff wastes, residues, and byproducts for farming, and also biomass and renewable energy gener generation. To conclude this presentation, Here in Brazil and around the world, we've been working with the concept of smart cities that need public policies. And in this myriad of public policies like effluent treatment, transport, alternative energies, swim mobility, all of these policies together make up the concept of smart cities. So FAPESC has called tenders for fostering these individualized public policies so that they can build a smart city concept. I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm available for questions and comments. And I apologize because my time was very short. I tried to provide you with clear information. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor. We look at the research opportunities that we have and the connections with the industry. And we also ask 
the industry to convey their needs to the academia. Thank you very much, Professor. Next on our program, we are going to call upon Otomar Miller from FIASC to make his presentation. I think you've skipped me, Suelen. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, Professor Ramiro is the one to be called upon now. Thank you very much. Uh, otherwise, we will um, make a mistake on the order. I hope that you can all hear me. Well, it is a great pleasure to be here with you. I'd like to greet our moderator, Sue Ellen, and also Professor Ricardo, who's one of the people who hold so much um, incentivizes us about this forum. I'd like to greet my colleagues, Amari, and other colleagues. We have worked together. And also we have our president of the council who has been re um, appointed, has been appointed once again. And I'd like to greet Cicero Blade, my a long standing friend, and he is someone who is almost a pioneer. We had biogas research in the state since the 80s, but Cicero was uh, someone who uh, encouraged this in the state of Paraná, and I'm sure he will be in the future too in the field of biogas. I remember when we had this consultancy at FIEP in 2013-2014. I remember Cyril there. And uh, the National Biogas Center had already been created. It is currently one of the most important institutions in this field in the country. And he was saying that he wanted to draw a map of all of the research and the presence of biogas in the state. And this was, I mean, it was biogas as a preview of the future. So thank you, Cicero, on behalf of the state. I'd like to thank you for your work, which is still uh, present today these days as a business person. I'd like to share my screen and I hope that you can see it. Can you see it? I will go back to the beginning. So we have a new form of support the facts work in a very a similar way, but we work with a concept from the beginning of our administration in 2019 of a new form of support, which we call new arrangements for research or an innovation or NAPs. And we are working with the biogas NAPs in renewable energy, which is one of the priorities defined by the technology of the state. We have already implemented the biogas NAPS and the specific one and a NAPS for solar power. We need to have a technical solution that would enable us to have better mobilization of the different assets of innovation made available by the state. We have a state division in thematic ecosystems and regional ecosystems. We work a lot with the concept of distribution of assets in the territory. We have important partners anchor companies, Itaipu is one of them, but we have an hotel, the co-ops, 
and the co-op sector is very strong in the state of Paraná, especially in regards to the production of animal protein, which is very important in the case of the production of biogas as well. We have other important institutions, uh, meter partners, and this enables us to have better mobilization integration, which is focused. Brazilian research is also focused on the development of wealth and well being. It is guided by the demands of the society. And with that, we have more assertiveness of the different support instruments. So this is the territory, the intellectual capital in the state is very well distributed. I will show you another slide later on, but you can see that the presence is very well distributed. It is robust and consistent with public institutions of science and technology. And I'm talking especially about the seven state universities and the five federal institutions of which we have 4,000 cities plus the federal institute. All of these institutions are well distributed in the state of Paraná. They are present basically throughout the state. You can see the distribution. They're present in 32 cities. the Latin American integration, the Federal University of Paraná. There are 14 campi with engineering. Also in the Southern region in Realeza, Santa Catarina and Rio Grande do Sul also have that. But in the case of Paraná and the headquarters of the southern border is Chapeca, but we have the presence of the federal university in Laranjeiras, Paraná. And so we take into account all of these assets as a common asset. We are about to implement our own platform, the whole intellectual capital is something that we are well aware of. And here you can see the implementation. So just for you to have an idea of our platform, we have two, actually we have 1,285 researchers whose main theme are renewable energies of them 569 have a PhD degree. In the area of biogas, we have 1,212 and gas, biogas separate from renewable energy. And 632 have a PhD degree. Also, digital transformation and sustainable development are very important in this area. So these are our leader partners. I've already talked about them and the importance of having CI biogas available in the Taipu Technological Park. And this is a, an important present given to the state of Paraná. And based on the initiatives for the development of center and the development of these concepts in the area, we had a dissemination of this incentive, this mobilization throughout the states. We have different projects that are being implemented in the whole state right now. Now, the key factors for development, I've already talked about them. We have biogas present throughout the state. In the West region, one of the largest uh, producer of animal protein in the country. Of course, it is more concentrated there, but it is present throughout the state. I'm not going to talk about the sectors of the future, but you can see some key factors for development. 
our vertical priorities. We have five among them. We have the horizontal priorities as well. We have over 20 that are being implemented in the state. This is a new fomenting modality, which is very important. This arrangement is inclusive. We have supported it, and it is based on the projects that are defined by the horizontal arrangements. To summarize, this is what I wanted to share with you. The objectives of uh, biogas are displayed here on my slide. My presentation will be made available to you. And I thank you all for your attention in this quick passage through this new fomenting modality with the biogas production chain in the state of Paraná. And I thank you for the opportunity to participate. Thank you, Dr. Ramiro. We thank you for this overview of the state of Paraná, showing your structure, showing the decentralization. This is a good model for the whole country to follow. And I would like to make a brief introduction of Ramiro. I forgot to do it. I was really uh, touched by everything that was going on, but Dr. Romero was State Secretary of Education for the state of Paraná. He was also Secretary of Science and Technology for Upper Education. He accumulated the uh, Department of State and then the industry and other departments. He was also pro-dean of research and continued education in the state of Paraná. He was president of the Araucaria Foundation, and he was also superintendent director of the Taipu Park. Thank you very much, Dr. Ramiro, for your participation. I will see you again for the discussion. I thank you. And now, we're going to have a presentation by Miller, who is going to introduce the uh, characteristics of Fiesme, and he is uh, president of Energy Issues Chamber. I hope that you are ready to start your presentation. Well, good afternoon, everybody. So I represent the Industry Federation in the state of Santa Catarina. This is an entity. This is a class representation entity, actually. And we receive all of the demands of the industry in the state and also disseminate new technologies, new tools that can be made available. We are not a research institution or a fomenting institution, but rather we are a class representation entity. Within FIESP's structure, we have some sectorial chambers. Energy issues is one of them. We also have the Environmental Issues Chamber, Sustainability, Infrastructure and Logistics, small companies. There are different sectorial chambers. There's nothing really specifically dedicated to biogas, but this is something that we superficially approach in the energy chamber. Now, I'm sharing some information to better contextualize. You can see that within the perspectives for Brazil, there is a lot of expectations for biogas. Uh, in 2019, we had 1.3 
billion cubic meters, which represents 7.6% uh, of the short-term potential. This is a potential where there would be no technological barrier. And the long term, 84 billion cubic meters. Today, we only use 1.5% of this potential. In Santa Catarina, in 2019, we only produced 32 million cubic meters. It represents 2.5% in terms of national production. But there is a long-term potential. It was evaluated by the Federal University of Santa Catarina upon the request of SC Gas, the natural gas distributor in the state. And the result was 1.1 billion cubic meters in the airport today's production only represents 2.9% of this potential. Therefore, I can see that the perspectives are really huge for you to have an idea of how big it is. The state of Santa Catarina today consumes 0 0.9 billions of normal cubic meters. In other words, a production of biogas or actually biomethane and could supply the state all of its need of natural gas today. We have some challenges. In this study carried out by the Federal University, you can see how this potential is distributed. It is different from what happens in Brazil. For us, we have an important concentration of animal waste resulting from agribusiness, swine culture and bovine culture and the resulting waste. They represent 85% of our potential. And in the current biogas production, we have about 76% coming from urban solid waste. And therefore, the profile is very different from that of Santa Catarina. We also have a characteristic in our state, which is very peculiar. We have small properties scattered throughout the state. We do not have large farms. We, from a social point of view, this is very positive in terms of income and wealth distribution. For things such as biogas or biomethane, it represents a challenge requiring investments of small facilities. And with that, we lose some of the scale ability here and requires a lot of investment in infrastructure and equipment. Within this context, there is low productivity that always leads us to higher costs. Of course, we need to invest. The need is significant so that we can have all of the network connections, be it in a natural gas network, which today would be almost being possible, or the electric power networks and the connection or you know the, is very difficult and there is also a lot of bureaucracy for the sales of energy to distributors or in the free market coming from all of these small facilities which is a very peculiar condition for the state of santa catarina there are opportunities of course this has been discussed widely in the forum and we're all aware of it biogas is an environmental solution it enables uh, the distribution of energy and in our state it is a tool for self-sufficiency 
in terms of energy and the different properties leading to gains in the value chain. And I would like to highlight here, Sinai. Sinai has a very large network of education units, but it also has seven technology institutes. They have specialties. There's one on automation, other on drinks, energy efficiency, production logistics, among the seven, but definitely these institutes can contribute for the development and solution of all of the challenges present in the production of natural gas. One of the things that we sometimes talk about would be to offset low productivity with the adoption of economic rewards by the environmental services provided. But this is a rather sensitive issue because if one entity or one company causes an environmental damage, that company has to solve it. It cannot be awarded to solve the problem that it has created. However, there are issues such as solid urban waste or the treatment of influence. The community causes that damage and perhaps we could create a few compensation mechanisms, economic compensation for this specific type of methane gas so that it's more competitive. Also the creation of specific credit lines and access to special funding as well. Today, I read some interesting statistics about 50% of all facilities are developed with their own resources. Professor Ramiro, I'm sorry, Professor Amorim already mentioned the state law. We also have tax incentive, the reduction of ICMS for small farmers, and we also have a partnership reducing ICMS tax for the production of biogas or biomethane. There is um, a credit of 12% for the internal acquisition of biogas and biomethane. So this is what I wanted to share with you. And I am available to answer any questions at the end. Thank you, Professor Miller. It was very clarifying. I would now like to kindly ask you to wait for the end of the panel so that we can have this discussion and talk about this relationship with the industry, biogas, and its demands as well, because I think that it's important to listen to one another so that we can work together. And now, moving on, we're going to invite Cicero Blay from Fiat. He will make his presentation and right now, I would like to read some of Cicero's quote, which are very important in the area of biogas. Uh, Cicero is an agronomist. He has a master's degree in civil engineering. He was founder and the first president of CI Biogas. He's a founding member and president emeritus of A Biogas his technical assistant of FIEP. And he was founder and CEO of Blay Solutions. He is also an author of the book entitled Biogas, an Invisible Asset. And he will have an opportunity to share his experience with us Please, please assist to make your presentation. Well, thank you, Suel, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much to all of you who are participating in this important forum. First of all, I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart 
for these references that you have made to Professor Ramir Rarab. There are two reasons. First, the weight of the words that you have said, and secondly, from uh, because of the reference of science and technology that Parana must not forget. Ramiro was one of the most prominent secretaries of education in the state of Parana, always producing something new and delivering to society whatever he produced. So I'm ever so grateful for everything that you have said so far. I had not planned to take part in this forum as a participant, but two weeks ago, I was uh, surprised by uh, the president of CIESC and the and by Rui Benetti and also the manager of strategic affairs, Jonathan Moore, to come here and to present the position of the Council and of FIEPS regarding biogas. And this is what I want to do. Biogas is one is in one of the subcommittees of uh, energy efficiency, sustainable uh, mobility, and uh, all of the other elements that surround biogas. And of course, there is an in-house FIEP concept that the industry has a direct interface with biogas because it also produces substrates that produce biogas. Secondly, it consumes biogas energy in mobility of peoples and cargoes with uh, applicability in logistics, not only electrical power, but also in cargo transport. And it's also a, an industry that supplies processes for producing biogas. That is the parts, components, vehicles, boilers, uh, generators, and even the connectivity with the 5.0 industry. So because of these three reasons, we can see that inside the productive sector, it is an industry that has a very strong link with biogas. And I'm referring to the industry itself, the manufacturing industry. It makes a very relevant contribution to Brazil. And there was a movement led by the National Industry Federation. So it's leading the transition the energy transition to natural gas. The industry wants that and so also wants biogas. It wants to include gas in its energy matrix, be it source gas or biological gases, so that the industry can profit from this new source that has been replacing to an extent the hydroelectrical power generation. And it's an industry which is increasingly committed to the sustainability reports, the uh, auditable sustainability indicators that are opposed to greenwashing. This is not what we do. The, so there is a whole world strug, uh, struggle that has been taken up by the financial, the world financial system. Um, and FIEP has a an infrastructure which is very much devoted to biogas and it includes several trade unions, especially the STIMA, which is the Araponga furniture industry trade union. Forklift trucks are changing its fuel and also SIMPA where another trade union where there is a process of using biogas 
coming from local plants, starch plants. And there are other trade unions that are involved with this new gas policy, which is taking over the discussion in FIEP. And the reference centers, there's the Sanai here in Curitiba, specialized in mobility and the Londrina uh, Sanai and the CIEP Sanai, which is, is specialized in environmental matters and also all of the innovation component elements in FIEP. There's the Corporation Incubator and, and also an industry lab. FIEP understands gas, biogas is a compound gas, and it believes that besides electrical power, the other modes of power could be mentioned, but the use of CO2 and digestate are components to this process. I'm going to show you my last slide with some FIEP proposals that make up a biogas policy First, that the uh, uh, novo gas to Brazil may be included. Secondly, that there is technical safety with a network of labs and universities that can provide a technical base for projects. Commercial safety, legal safety, especially with the introduction of the Paraná Regulating Agency, then the safety of people and processes, which is very much neglected by this new approach of biodax. A biodigester exploded in the state of Paraná very recently. This means that we have to keep a vigilant eye on the safety of peoples and processes, the inclusion of local development and local development arrangements, bringing about circular economics. And I mean, this is corresponding to oil downstream. The provision of specific funding because biogas is a decarbonifying agent the uh, progress of biogas 5.0 and this is the information that i had to convey to you thank you very much indeed for your presentation cicero this is the downside of working online because we cannot come close and have a chat but we will do in the future. Thank you for your presentation. Now we are going to invite Hovanir Baumgartner, uh, who is responsible for Fiat Sanai through its eight Innovation and Technology Institutes. He's an engineer Térmicas pela Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina. with a Master in Sciences. Uh, and he has a Master's in uh, Innovation from the Rio Grande do Sul University and has many years of experience in management. We would love to hear you, please. Hello, good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank you for this invitation to take part in this forum, which is so important for all of the southern part of Brazil, not only to explain what is going on in the biogas industry, but also to disseminate the its culture. Santa Catarina already has a, a law in this regard. We've worked with 
trying to type in some projects. So I've come here to share with you some of our projects and what we can provide in terms of support to the industry for the use of biogas as an energy matrix for our manufacturing plants. There is a peculiarity to the state of Rio Grande do Sul, and we know that there are similar things in other projects, in other states. I mean, this is a tender that is specifically to Rio Grande do Sul, put together by three different agencies with the support of the state government, with the support of, <coughs> excuse me, of WIPO and other agencies. This is one of the fronts for fostering innovation here in uh, our state. If you're interested, this presentation and its slides will be sent to all participants. We also include other sources of funding that can be tapped into not only here in Rio Grande do Sul, but uh, in other places of the country. Our purpose is to present to you a specific tender for manufacturing plants here in Rio Grande do Sul. As I said, it was the fruit of a partnership of different agencies in this state for our state startups. And there is a classification of different categories. But we receive funds and we want to provide companies small to medium size. We are not allowed to provide support to large companies. So basically, this is funds for small and medium sized companies through SESI, SENAI, and IEL, and also with SABRAI. The counterpart of companies is in a favorable scheme. So we want to uh, bring innovation to corporations. So not only is, are these funds not refundable, but also there's the whole technology chain that is available here in the state of Rio Grande do Sul. Besides the use of our Institute Senai and the SESI Innovation Center, we have the support of the Rio Grande do Sul state universities and from other states too. We also have a uh, support of the Instituto Evaldo Lloyd, IEL. So we not only provide funds to technology and innovation, but also to culture change in corporations. We want to assure that projects work out from the innovation point of view. So we want to have an idea to improve a process. Uh, and we want to make this reach society. We want to develop technology, market it, and help corporations grow. Project scopes range from a competitive phase, a basic TRL, all the way to validating a project in a productive scale. So we provide support to companies who will not be competing with the academia in basic or scientific research. What we do is to take what has been researched by academia and to turn this into a product and uh, processes. So there are several uh, theme areas, and many of them have to do with biogas, like agrotechnology, biotechnology, smart cities, circular economy, different modes that can be applicable to biogas by developing a component or a process. These are fast completing processes, minimum three months, maximum one and a half years. So you take an innovative idea, turn it into reality and deliver this project, product to society as quickly as possible. 
we have already set out a second cycle of this tender, uh, which is open up to April the 25th. Then we will have a third cycle for this year. If you're watching this presentation, you have an idea and you can't comply with this deadline on April the 26th, there is another cycle that starts. At first, your idea is assessed by a pool of experts. And if your idea is innovative, it will be validated and you will develop your plan. So you'll be working harder, planning your uh, timeline who your partners will be so that this can be assessed by a pool of ex experts who will then grant you these funds. This is the second year. This is a tender that will be repeated several times in the future. We hope to have a next edition next year. So if you're interested, you may do I will submit your proposal this month or the next one by July the latest. You will receive more information on the slides to be sent to you by the organizers of this forum. So you will be sent several presentations. If you have any questions, please do get in touch with us directly. This is a tender for the state of Rio Grande do Sul, but we know that there are people from all over the country and we want to help you out. Send in your questions and we'll be here to provide support to development of uh, Brazilian industry. Thank you very much. And I, you, I wish you all the best for this event. Thank you, Dr. Rovanir Baumgartner. A very German sounding name. Thank you very much for your presentation. And next we will hear Felipe Marquez from Sibio Gas, who is our partner in this event. Our two institutions interacted very closely. And we will also have a chance to speak to them about Sibio Gas. Felipe Marquez has been working with biogas for the past 10 years with an emphasis in technological schemes and businesses in energy and sustainability in the Brazilian market and agribusiness. He has taken part in projects like agro energy condominiums, uh, mobility, distributed generation microgrids. He has worked for bio, Plano Biogas companies and is currently the development, technical development director of the International Renewable Energy Center, CBO Gas. Felipe is with the engineering, environmental engineering department. You have the floor, Felipe. Thank you, Swellen. A little over 10 years ago, my first biogas project was performed upon the invitation of Professor Bill Play in August 2009, a while ago. I would like to take this opportunity to thank him for having me introduce it to me, and I fell in love with it, as opposed to my other colleagues who shared an overview of the press perspectives for the sector. I will talk a little bit more about the perspectives and demands, discussing some of the latest figures we have available for biogas and biomethane in Brazil. And I will make a brief summary for the south of Brazil for uh, some tips actually on projects that are more relevant for fomenting in the south of Brazil. A technical note on the panorama of biogas in Brazil. It was issued two days ago with consolidated data for 2020. Brazil um, consumes 2.2 billion cubic meters of biogas per year. We have 675 plants altogether, 148 new plants last year, representing a growth of 22% when compared to 2019. 
Here we can see clear growth in the number of biogas plants and also in the production in the respective plants in Brazil. This is a trend. We will further increase this volume of produced biogas. Also the number of plants that are operating. Initially, this growth and the number of plants was related to small and medium sized plants after 2015. Some larger projects started operating with an increase, a, actually with a significant increase in the production of biogas. We can see that the growth of biogas is not divided by different categories and it is very similar to that of other sectors. After 2018, the number of plants has increased continuously. This graph shows us important information. You can see that many of the plants that are considered as plants that are being renovated or refurbished, in other words, plants that started with a vocation and made technical adjustments or improved their energy specifications started operating and therefore the number of existing plants is very small and those who start investing in biogas or those who only had a flare installed and had biogas uh, production but didn't use it are already using it enjoying biogas and looking for alternatives so that biogas can be used more efficiently and profitably. There has been a maturation process in the biogas chain. This has to do with experiences and the number of suppliers in the chain. Regarding the increase according to the different substrates, by far, agribusiness grows a lot more in terms of number of plants than all of the other sources. However, in RSU, this number of plants reflects biogas conditions uh, that have to do uh, with uh, sanitary landfill, which has biogas stored. The volume is large. So even though in terms of amount of plants, the number is significant, it is significant in terms of volume of biogas produced. And also in terms of the different applications, there is a larger amount of electric power generate. The number of bioglass plants connected to the grid also increases every year. This is very interesting, actually. We have a reduction of the maintenance costs. We also have better yield. It is a lot more efficient when they can deliver energy continuously without having to limit themselves to local consumption demands. I would also like to highlight that uh, for GNR and biomethane, the number of plants increased very little, but this is where we will see a large number of biogas plants. A lot of the biogas plants that we have today supplying thermal and electric energy will migrate to biomethane because this has become more interesting and also the technologies for biogas purification have consolidated in the country, especially in smaller scales. And when we give a look at the potential of biogas in the Brazilian South, we can see that uh, a little more than 80% lies in rural properties, bovine culture, swine culture, and poultry. So uh, we have to take into account the size of our properties in the south of Brazil. And uh, the use of biogas in the south 
depends on modular technologies for small, medium size and large productions, and also integration strategies, integration for biogas, biomethane, and also according to the different substrates. However, I would like to highlight that the integration according to biogas and biomethane have higher strategic value than the integration when we think of avoiding logistical costs with the use of trucks, for example. And another important aspect is that today our current production is a small part when compared to the potential of biogas for Brazil, which is 42 million cubic meters per year. There's a lot of opportunity for growth to increase the number of biogas plants, to also increase the use of uh, biogas and biomethane in all of the southern states. And this is my last slide. It is extremely important to reduce information asymmetry so that the biogas market can grow. The expectation is that the market will grow 20% per year, at least 20% per year in the upcoming years. Biomethane production should grow more in the next few years, and this will be superior to all of the other applications. Integrated projects gain more value, especially those involving small and medium-sized properties. So we already have some experiences in the south of Brazil with integration of product projects using biogas collectors and projects involving the integration of substrate. In other words, the waste comes from one property, goes to a central area, which uses the substrate to produce biogas and generate electrical power. Another relevant aspect for the south of Brazil is that electric and gas energy utilities in the south are developing specific market strategies for biogas and biomethane. How will biogas and biomethane increasingly be a more significant part of your business? I thank you for your attention and am honored to participate in this panel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Felipe, for your presentation. We will now move on with Dr. Juliano Rodriguez. He is professor of the Caxias do Sul University. He will talk about uh, Uxinova, the innovation agency. He's a civil engineer by the Rio Grande do Sul Federal University. He's also a professor in the undergraduation course of engineering in exact sciences and also in the graduate program for environmental sciences. He also is a professor in the law course. He is a pro dean at our university and we would now like to ask Giuliano to introduce his structure. Thank you, Professor Swell, and I thank you all for the opportunity to participate in this event. Undoubtedly, and on behalf of our first panelist, uh, Professor Ogier, and also by contactor, I'd like to greet all of my colleagues in this panel. And as commented before, it is very relevant for us to hear all of these perspectives. It, we're talking about the strategic intelligences that are already installed. I also have another perspective, and I wanted to show you how uh, an upper education institution with technology. Para contribuir com toda a sociedade nesse... so that uh, they are contributing for this process on innovation. This is going to be the focus of my presentation, and I will also talk about 
innovations in our agency where we want to be more and more prepared to work with technological development, including the topic of biogas and biomethane, where we have a significant expertise represented here by Swellen, as well as other professors who work in these different areas. And so I'm now going to share our system in Caxias do Sul, which was recently reconfigured. Some initial questions. If this region of the Rio Grande do Sul mountains could develop technology and if we could produce new technologies that are relevant for the development of the region and the country and if the environment was appropriate for innovation and I apologize I have to remove this uh, screen here because it's on my way but anyway um, if we could have an adequate environment for innovation and entrepreneurship enabling people to contribute for prosperity and if we had an environment a laboratory available for the improvement of science to carry out research with human resources that are highly trained and with top equipment to work in these areas okay we understand that we do have all of this structure today we have joint resources that are very complete in the country for the development of science and technological development. Within this historical context in our university, which is constantly changing, we understood that it was important for us to promote a readjustment of all of this based on the willingness and the need to have innovation as a vector for the improvement of our research, of our interactions with the society, and our own sustainability. And therefore, we created an innovation agency called INOVA. It combines the community and the academia aiming at the development of research and projects. We have four different pillars, Cataliza Oaks, Techno Oaks, Startups, and Idea Oaks. They're all part of the internal environment of the institution and have a relationship with the different uh, institutes, services, laboratories, business units, and in the external environment, it has a relationship with different companies, investors, physical persons. And I will now talk about these four dimensions and how they are structured. One of them, Idea Oaks, an integration center of innovating ideas. Here we have a summarized portfolio with different uh, maker spaces, innovation events, design thinking, and uh, Start Ux is the center for the acceleration of innovating businesses. Techno Ux is the science, technology, and innovation park, which has been around for over five years. And now as we reconfigure the system, it will be part of this system. Cataliza Ux as uh, an acceleration center for the prospection of resources for innovation. With this, we can go from the ideas to the practice and not necessarily with a linear vision, but to enable internal actors and the society as a whole to realize this structure 
and can pursue adequate means so that they are more productive. And here we have the Center for the Integration of Innovating Ideas, focusing on ideas. Startups focuses on business. Technux focusing on business and infrastructure as an innovation hub for businesses and strategic partnerships. Catalyza Ops, focusing on research and technological development so that ideas are turned into results, trying to participate and call for tenders, private investments. They are all very concentrated in this process with a proactive infrastructure that supports investors, companies, institutions to access the best conditions that are available to different areas. This is our team. We have two coordination offices. One of them is the research and development office, and the other one is the innovation office. They are very important and support us in this process. Techno's office, headed by Dr. Cassiana, among other offices, as uh, here we have industrial asset office and the technological service office. I would also talk about the macro lines of institutional expertise that we work with. The main institutional values I'd like to include in this setup for uh, research, development, and innovation. We have the smart and advanced materials. Uh, you have probably heard of our project. We have Grafino for the production characterization and application and development. It is based on constant action at a local, regional, and national level. It is the largest production unit of this project in South America nowadays, but it has a capacity to produce, characterize, and develop new products. In addition, we have polymeric composite and ceramic in the area of biotechnology, agro-business, and wine biotechnology, food environmental, process and technology engineering, and also in the area of environmental sciences and engineering with the treatment of water and effluent, ecotoxicology, and environmental planning and management. And with this, we have significant potential. I now wrap up with some history or part of the history of our institutional journal. It will be introduced later on. And in December, we had the honor to receive this award by Petrobras as one of Petrobras' main suppliers in the recent times. This is done every two years, and they acknowledge their main suppliers. They recently acknowledged the area of science, technology, and innovation. And we were awarded by our deliveries, especially this one that was highlighted here. We have some projects that have been developed along with Petrobras, but the one that was highlighted was the one for the optimization of the use of biogas, a research and technological development project coordinated by Dr. Liao and actually Professor Swelling. We were part of this team. 
part of this project, both uh, Professor Swellen and me. And we also worked with Petrobras. If you allow me to expand this, you can see that we were acknowledged by the enormous capacity to articulate coordination, integration with the whole development chain applied to the research and development in the country. And they also mentioned the Brazilian South Forum of Biogas and Biomethane with its third edition in 2020. And actually, uh, the, this is going to be made public next week, but I wanted to share the information with you now. I would like to say that our future is in movement. It's moving forward and we would like to contribute with technology and knowledge, especially in the area of biogas and biomethane. Thank you very much. And thank you, Professor Giuliano. I will now invite, and we are already a little bit late, but I'm going to invite Dr. Ricardo Steinmetz. I apologize for my pronunciation of his German last name, but anyway, he is currently a member of the steering committee of the Biodigester Network for the Latin American and Caribbean. And he is also president of the Brazilian Society for the Management of Agriculture and Agri-Industrial Waste. He has collaborated a lot with this event. He also worked with a research group at Embrapa. He coordinates the activities of the Biogas Institute. And Dr. Ricardo, please share your presentation. Thank you very much, Suellen. My surname is pronounced Steinmetz, but I know it's hard. First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation of speaking to you. And I would like to make an invitation to you too. We are at our last panel and the audience has been spectacular. We are very happy. You all know me because of my work as an analyst at uh, Embrapa. I am currently president of the Brazilian Society of agricultural and agro-industrial waste experts, SBIRA. And this is one of the roles of SBIRA to provide discussion for her so that we can bring different actors together, especially the actors of science and technology, the experts that work on this topic and that have this possibility, availability, and interest to carry out this work. So I'd like to thank you for this opportunity and I will try to be very brief. I don't want to be repetitive. Many of the previous panels have already uh, discussed this topic. What I wanted would be to challenge you. If we look at biogas today as an overview, We have spoken so much about this in this event, which is focused on Brazil and especially Southern Brazil. So we, it is normal that we look at what is going on in the market right now and what the possibilities are for this precise point in time. But I would like to challenge you and to ask you to look at the trends 
where we're looking at biogas around the world and not to just biogas, but the whole concept. We've spoken so much about this from the very first panel, actually, since last year, the one before last in Chapeco. And also the webinars throughout last year. And I'm referring to this concept of circular economy. Professor Cicero spoke about this. Biogas has a very strong role to play. We have this triad, uh, production of food, production of energy and resources, natural resources here rep uh, represented by water. In this context of a biorefinery with this new vision that we have, we need to understand the logic around it. We have to understand what is going on around the world and what may happen in the future. And here comes what is being researched and investigated. Innovation is based on knowledge, someone said before me. We have to have the knowledge base and to have access to it in order to think of innovation, because innovation is what is going to help solving this problem. If we try to imagine the future, we have to understand whether this future is going to be disruptive or not, how this is going to unfold. And then we have to keep an eye on what is going on around the world and what is going on in the academia, which is, because there is where state-of-the-art technology is being created. This is the knowledge frontier. So researchers and the people who are at the head of a research activity, and I'm not talking just about renowned researchers and scholars. I am talking about those who are specializing in research, namely those who are perfecting the use of scientific methodology in order to apply this information to a real problem. If we look today, there are so many things. Professor Cicero has uh, spoken about circular economy, and there are so many tools for making life cycle analysis. We have the possibility of using biogas, as Professor Sue Ellen has said, by making use of CO2, There is the hydrogen trend that we now envisage. We have the possibility of producing biomass with the waste that is generated. And then we go into another knowledge frontier. Processes based on these bio imports biopolymers, biopharma, and so on. And we need to understand what is going on at laboratory benches in academia in order to understand this reality. And there are some practical cases. We have plant-based products on supermarket shelves, plant-based meats or laboratory meats, which is made up of animal cells, but it is laboratory cultured. You no longer breed cattle. The same thing about milk to produce 
the food without having to produce the animal because there are ethical elements around it issues that the consumer is concerned with i'm not trying to read the future i'm just saying that there are trends there are things that we very recently thought that was going to take a long time to materialize and they are now a reality so for biogas how are we going to adjust and how are we going to look for new technologies so that we can integrate into this process that is going to change i don't know how but we know that there are these trends that will change the very way in which raw material for biorefineries is produced, namely waste. This is going to change. I'd like to leave you with some food for thought then. Ask questions, follow these trends, look up ICT experts and Senai at USC. There are funds that are available, fund lines. So this is the challenge I would like to leave you with. And on the other hand, to challenge researchers, people who are in uh, technology institutes and so on. And I'm quoting Stuart Firestein, who spoke recently in a World Congress of Scientific Thinking. We failed in communicating the value of uncertainty in science as something positive rather than negative. It is up to us as researchers and science and technology agents to show what the circumstances we have in science and to demonstrate the credit of science. And this is all based on education. So just briefly, I'd like to speak about what brought me here, which was to invite you to get to know Sbera which was founded in 2008. It is a scientific association, not for profit. It is multidisciplinary. We have electrical engineers, environmental engineers, uh, chemists, bio, uh, biologists, ec economists, managers, And it is not an association of class. It is oriented to those who are working with R&D and innovation regarding agriculture, cattle breeding, and agribusiness waste. There is a unit in Sbera, which is a publishing house. We are now a registered publishing house. This is volunteer work, but it is a major opportunity for those who would like to be associated and that may cooperate. These are some examples. In 2019, we launched two books on wastes. We translated a glossary, which is available at the Sbera page. This is the translation of a publication existent, existing in Europe in order to help Brazilian experts to use a language which is internationally acknowledged. In 2019, in a partnership with Embrapa, we published this book. for uh, digestate treatment 
and biogas use. And last year, because of the pandemic, we published this manual of Jitsi Meat, a quick start tool for education. So we help out with events, as I said before, we are the organizers of this forum together with Embrapa, Caxias University and Save Biogas. Last year, just to illustrate the events that we helped putting together. We had the fifth CISCA last year, the Animal Science Sustainability Symposium with uh, three universities in Brazil. We also helped out with the uh, organization. There's this forum we all taking part in. And we hope to have many editions of this forum in the future. And to close, Suelen, I'd like to make an invitation. The main focus of SPERA is holding the CIGERA, which is the International Symposium on Agricultural and Agri Industrial Waste Management. It is an event that takes place every two years. It is an international one. It goes from place to place. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, or fortunately, we don't know, the experience we're having with the forum is a very positive one to hold an online meeting. There are pros and cons, but the overall balance is a very positive one. So I would like to invite you, if you're interested, do prepare your paper. We're going to make the website available for the official launch within a few days. There will be all of the information there. So if you're working with research in agricultural waste, cattle breeding, waste, waste and industrial waste, do not hesitate. We're here to help you and to bring everybody together. Thank you very much, Suelen. Thank you very much, Ricardo. We would have had time for question. Otherwise, um, uh, however, we do not have enough time. I think that uh, we aimed too high with too many presentations, which, by the way, were all wonderful. So maybe we will have to perfect this for the next meeting. But we would like to thank you all so much for taking part in this meeting. And just now we are having a closing session with Flavia. And then we have a researchers meeting just after the end of the forum. Everything that was discussed here will have a major impact in the society of Southern Brazil. Thank you all for taking part, and I'm I'm sorry we didn't have time for questions. Flavia, up to you. Thank you very much, Suelen. We'd like to thank Suelen for having moderated this panel, our guests also. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask Suelen to remain with us so that we can move on with our program. And for the closing remarks, we invite the representatives of the sponsor, uh, uh, companies, um, Felipe Marco for Sabio Gas and uh, our representative of Embrapa, Ayrton, Felipe, Suelen from the university. Good afternoon to all of you. And you may say your closing remarks. Good afternoon. For the closing remarks, I would like to make a brief report of what we live through here without going on for too long. First, because this is an online model, which has, which calls for a more dynamic um, type of format. And also because we are behind schedule. But I think the forum 
purpose has been fulfilled. Three institutions came together, CPO guys in Brava and USC and also Esbera managed to put this whole structure together. There were 48 lecturers, 14 moderators, a thousand people registered, 400 people in the waiting list, 61 foreigners took part, 17 sponsoring companies and um, in the ex exhibition space, 25 supporting institutions, interaction with the UK, zero air tickets, zero displacement, zero coffee break, zero hotel fees. So this is an unprecedented event and we will be able to tell the story in the future. This is now part of our careers. This is an event that should have been held in September last year, but we had to postpone it. We then decided to hold it in March. It would have been an uh, on-site event and not to um, lose connection with our uh, participants. We made webinars in seven, September, October, and February, and they were successful. We had a thousand participants, and um, people are still accessing this on the uh, web, on YouTube. So we had many comments about this, and we had a, there came a time this, this year when we had to choose to make an on-site event or an online one. It was very difficult to make this decision. Many meetings were held and we decided to make an online forum for everybody's safety. This choice included selection of platforms. We had to carry out a lot of quoting, but a platform that could hold all of the plenary sessions, business spaces, technical visits, where, you know, everybody should be visiting local biogas production and this couldn't take place. And therefore it was really a difficult decision, but we had no choice. Because even with the pandemic, all of the losses we had, we had to keep uh, the biogas environment heated and that has to do with the results of the pandemic and therefore this was a choice we made and I hope uh, that we were able to meet the expectations of those who registered. Um, we had a wait list, but we had a limitation of 1,000 people on our platform. But what we can do it was um, what was what we did actually. And therefore, I'd like to share a little bit of my assessment with Felipe and our Ayrton so that they can also share their thoughts. Very well. Can I start then? Muito breve. I will be brief. As a representative of Embrapa, in one of those sessions that we have, because we we're having the event, the first feeling we had, and I'd like to share it with everybody, is gratitude. We are very thankful to everyone for their participation. The numbers shared by Swellen only shows how in a great moment of difficulty we're going through, the biogas sector and chain believed in this event and was here with us and therefore all of our supporters and the decisions made were very difficult to change the dynamics of the event and some that was something very important for us 
so that we could carry out the online event. We all know that uh, there's human contact among us, good conversations, a cup of coffee. Unfortunately, in the virtual world, we can't do this. We only hope that in the next edition, we will be able to see us all in person and embrace one another. Networking is so important. It enables people to be together and the feeling of belonging also. Cultivating empathy among us, uh, that's something very good that we've seen in this event. I also wanted to have your feedback on how things went in this environment, the good things and the things that didn't work. That's all very important so that we can evolve. Our colleagues in the group who are in the backstage and do not show, you have no idea how much work is put into the organization. I'm not going to name each and every one of them, but we really want to thank them. It was really moving, actually. We realized that people were working because they believed in how important this is. They believed in this idea and that really makes a lot of difference. Once again, we are grateful to everyone who's been with us in the last three days of the event. I now turn over to Felipe. Otherwise, he won't be able to say anything and the organizers are, are already letting us know that we have to wrap up our work. Felipe, please. Thank you, Ayrton and Suelen. First of all, I would like to thank you for another forum together. This is an event of what belongs to the South. It, although we had participants from all over the country and from overseas as well, I'm so happy to see this connection. When we receive the questions, we realize what the problems are what the reaction to the different topics of the plenary sessions are, indicating that we're really dealing with important aspects with the core of this business. And I remember one of the comments in one of the lectures, somebody said, I'm going to review my project based on your lectures. That's quite significant. It is really nice. I also wanted to thank our team and give special thanks to the participants, you who have used the platform, showed us that we made the right choices in investing in a platform that was not only for transmission, but meant for interaction. You interacted a lot with us. The discussion rooms were excellent. A lot of people contributed. The discussions were very good indeed. And therefore, we thank all of the participants for showing us that even with social distancing, this forum was able to keep its warmth. I hope that uh, next time we can be closer with physical proximity on on-site event. But I thank you all for your presence and your energy. Also, the sponsors put in a lot of energy. The event was really very welcoming. And therefore, uh, every time we got in the platform, there was such a good energy in the air. And it belongs to our event. Thank you all. Thank you, Felipe, Ayrton, Suelen, and everybody who was here with us. 
We are now going to announce the access code for the biogas challenge. The code is the word INNOVADOR. I'm going to repeat it. The word is INNOVADOR. And we couldn't wrap up without special thanks to our sponsors, Bolamacas Itaipu Binacional, EBEP Energy Program for by a year, the UK Prosperity Fund implemented by a consortium from Dubai Adams List International, Institute of Research Hubs, FTG, Carbon Limit Technologies, Copa, uh, the, to the silver quota, we, I would like to thank BRDE, Leo Energia, SDG Gas, so Gas, Browns Coda. AB Energy, A White, CHP, Brazil, Intermac, ERBR, GNPW, Janice Berger, Lumic, Prex, Diesel, and UBE. And our dear supporters, our thanks to Abiogaz, Abrel, Picama do Brasil, Alemanha, APL, Metal Mecânico da Serra Gaúcha, CIC, Caxias do Sul, Convention, Caxias Bureau, Imatera, AS, Ipegre SC, PX, Senai, GEF, Biogas, Brazil, IDR, Paraná, Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovations, Red, Biolex, Zebrae, SEGE. We also thank CIMEX, Simplas, Unido, Univatis, ASTAP, Sinocultura, and Fazenda Trevisan. And of course, we thank you all for your participation. And I'd like to remind you that access to the platform for all of those who have registered can be used in the next 30 days. You can attend the lectures whenever you want to, as well as all of the discussions. And therefore, feel free to participate in the next 30 days. And then um, we also wish you all a happy Easter in 20. 22. We will see you again. See you there. Thank you all very much.